Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, How to Prepare for Upgrade Season. Thanks for joining us. As everyone is still getting signed in, we'll just go over a few housekeeping items. Please think of questions throughout the webinar and direct them to the Q&A section. We'll be answering them throughout and at the end of the webinar. This webinar will be recorded and we will share the recording with you shortly after the webinar is finished. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll follow up with you afterwards. Reaching out to info at jamf.com will also get you in contact with someone at Jamf quickly. My name is Rick Goody and my role at Jamf is a Customer Outcomes Engineer in APAC. I've worked with Jamf products for over 12 years, both as a consultant and now directly for Jamf. I'm delighted to be here today to share this session, How to Prepare for Upgrade Season. The focus of this webinar is to provide practical insights and actionable tips to help you make informed decisions and capitalize on the latest Apple innovations. Before we jump into the content of the session, let me give you an overview of what we'll be covering today. We'll start with evaluating, preparing your environment, lifecycle management, and finally last minute changes. Before we begin with how to prepare for upgrade season content, I want to give you a brief overview about who we are and what we do here at Jamf. Our purpose is to simplify work. We do this by creating enterprise secure solutions that are consumer simple and protect the privacy of your users. More than 72,500 organizations rely on Jamf to manage over 30 million devices. Our recent stats show some of the industries we support in the enterprise space. We help many schools, colleges, universities, hospitals, healthcare providers, and of course, small to medium businesses across the globe succeed with Apple. So how do we do this? We provide solutions that manage and secure Apple at work, whether it's a school, bank, hospital, hotel, a company of a handful of workers or a large organization spanning the globe. And we are the only company in the world that provides complete management and security for an Apple first environment. Our ability to manage, secure, and extend the Apple experience with deep integrations with Microsoft, Google, Okta, and AWS, as well as many other companies to deliver a complete experience in the workplace, wherever that may be. We have a long history of delivering same day support, so you can ensure you can support your users the day Apple releases new features and security updates, so you can continue to be productive and secure in your work. And our customers think highly of the products, services and support we continue to provide since we started over 20 years ago. So let's get started with how to prepare for upgrade season by looking at the evaluation stage. The key to keeping up is knowing where to look and when to be looking. Don't feel like you have to be doing all the testing yourself. However, being aware of what is going on is just as important as doing the testing. Only you know your environment and the workflows you created. So while Apple, Jam, and any other number of vendors you work with can do their own testing, only you can know that you are using a certain condition or existence of a file to trigger your next action. One of the major changes this year is the way the setup assistant and the dot apple setup done file are linked and the logic behind those. So while this may not be a major change, it could affect your workflow or process something only you can know about in your environment. Both Apple and Jam provide us with lots of resources. We have the Apple Platform Deployment Guide available to us. This is Apple's guide on deploying their products to your organization. Next, we have Apple Seed for IT. This is a resource available to businesses and schools which provide access to beta software and testing plans. WWDC is Apple's worldwide developer conference. This is where they showcase the new OSs coming soon and new features. They run many sessions over four days which are available on demand to watch back. You can access this by visiting developer.apple.com and also watching back previous years. The Jamf Learning Hub is our central location for all Jamf documentation, release notes and technical articles. The Jamf Training Catalog is your one-stop shop to watch and get access to training videos which show and highlight how to use the Jamf products. We have Jamf Nation, the largest Apple IT management forum in the world. And last but definitely not least is the Mac Admin Slack where you can join thousands of Mac admins in a free Slack instance. Apple C for IT or the Apple Beta Software Program 
is the program we as admins should be using to access beta documentation and downloads, as well as providing feedback. Apple also provides test plans. While these test plans are not definitive for every environment, it will give you an insight into areas that have potentially changed or Apple feel could have an impact on your users. In addition, how to make use of some of the new features which users may be excited about. Jamf also have beta programs, not just for testing new features after WWDC, but to stay on top of our year-long program of improvements and feature releases. As a beta user, you'll get a Jamf Cloud hosted beta instance that you can set up with your specific workflows. It's updated each time we release a new beta, so you don't need to set it up again each time. Preparing your environment. So how do you get prepared? It's best practice to ensure that you keep your device's operating system up to date. That's your iOS, iPadOS, macOS, and tvOS devices. When that's not possible, you need to be able to have visibility of those devices and implement policies to defer or force the update depending on the situation. Whatever your plan, it's about making sure you have visibility over your compliance. Regularly update in the operating system, apps, and software on all devices to ensure that they have the latest security patches and bug fixes. MDM allows you to set automatic updates on macOS and mobile devices to make this process easier. As a new addition to our Jamf Security Cloud Portal, we have brought vulnerability management so you can have a better idea of your fleet security status. It's critical to monitor things like known vulnerabilities in previous operating system versions and applications. Apple has now acknowledged that the most recent release is the most secure release. Not all fixes can or will be backported. Additionally, we have functionality in Jam Protect Endpoint, which will allow you to get insights into your environment and how compliant your fleet is with the recommendations and baselines. In the image, we can see the section that relates to software updates and patches. Current software and auto updated enabled are a match and can show your machine's configuration and update process are working correctly. Every year, Apple provides new features as part of their OS release. To ensure these features run as expected, Apple will then remove devices from the supported state to ensure their OS does not have a detrimental effect on the device and vice versa. Additionally, there'll be other requirements to ensure a smooth upgrade such as space. So can your devices run the latest OS? For the past seven years, one of our senior professional engineers, Lauren Pertois, has created a Jamf Pro extension attribute to help customers check if their devices are compatible with the latest or upcoming macOS release. This is a great place to start so you know how your fleet will handle the update. Do you need to budget for new machines? Do you need to work with users to clear some space, archive some work, or enable some on-demand cloud storage? The extension attribute will give you a great starting point. However, you may have devices where they meet some requirements and not others. This is where you'll want to leverage some more specific smart groups and start planning to get your devices ready. Also, as history has shown, you may want to ensure your devices are as up-to-date as possible to ensure they are capable of handling the update or other possible eventualities. A great example of this was in 2002 for the Ventura release. Apple changed the way major updates were applied and installed. The resulting issue was that devices were not adhering to major OS deferment via a configuration profile. While Apple fixed this in a release update, it did require some machines to update. So being ready for this or any other eventuality is a good thing, as well as updating, patching, security updates and fixes is another byproduct of your preparation. There are several ways to get your devices patched, and this is not a definitive list. While no one method will work for every situation or environment, the key to success is using the method or combination of methods which work in your environment. In Jamfro 10.48, we released a beta feature that is designed to allow a better experience in managing and deploying updates, as well as building for the future to fall in line with Apple's direction. Please be aware that this feature is still in beta and can be turned on or off. In the video playing, you can see a user applying updates to computer groups and device groups in one action.
Prior to enabling beta managed software updates, Mass Actions is where you can go to deploy not only software updates, but also many other commands or changes you would like to see affect a large group of devices all in one place. Then we have Nudge from Eric Gomez, one of the Mac community's favorite tools. As the name highlights, its function is to nudge your users to perform an update to a specific required OS. If your users are admins, it can take them directly to the Apple software update in settings. If they're not admins, you could direct them to a self-service policy to initiate an update. Superman is another great tool that has been written and shared by Kevin White. This tool is great if your users are not admins as it leverages the Jamf Pro Mass Actions via the API. To provide a user-centric process, they can defer updates should the time not be right while still following the Apple preferred method of MDM updates. It also allows for you as an admin to set deferral limits and time limits to ensure updates happen in a timely manner. The Arrays install script is another great tool written and shared by Graham Pugh and has expanded over the years to bring in and work with other projects. This is now includes BART read and Swift dialogue for notifications and Nindy Gill's Miss CLI for the downloads. The script can be used to download macOS full installers and to reinstall, upgrade, or erase macOS. I've found it great to be leveraged as part of a self-service policy to do major upgrades. All of these tools have originally been created by one person who wanted to solve an issue or a workflow. They have then gone on to share and have others collaborate and contribute to, into these projects. My preference in the past has been to use Mass Actions, Nudge, or Superman to perform minor OS updates. Then use the Arrays install script paired with a self-service policy or even a nudge policy that points them to that self-service policy to perform the major OS updates. While it's not in the scope of this webinar to go into that much detail on these processes, I have provided links at the end which take you through in greater detail all of these workflows and usage from previous webinars or conference talks. While Apple are a very secretive company, one thing we've learned over the years is they do have a cycle like many other companies. Like we've grown to expect a new iPhone every year, we've grown to expect a new OS every year for each of their devices. So keeping on top of this will allow you to be successful in using Apple devices in your organization. As previously mentioned, deploying software updates is critical to maintaining the security and integrity of Apple's platforms. Not only does this keep your environment secure, but it also allows users to benefit from and enjoy the latest features and security fixes. So it's important for your organization to evaluate all the key areas that work together in your environment all year long so you're ready to deploy each release on the first day it's publicly available. As we can see from this slide, there is a trend that Apple have for their release cycles, as well as how they ramp up development and release beta updates. If you're not testing in those early phases, it's unlikely that any meaningful change will be implemented before release day. So if you didn't file feedback in those early releases, don't expect it to be resolved in the release candidate. This graph shows us a linear representation of the release cycle from announcement to release. As we know from Apple's recent event, the release date has been scheduled for the 26th of September for Sonoma. This means we already have a release candidate one and went from beta 7 straight to our release, skipping some previously needed beta cycles. So while there could be a secondary release candidate, the expectation is this is your final chance to do any testing before public release and the machines start prompting users to update. As we've seen from historic releases and trends from Apple, being a Mac admin is a year-long cycle which will inevitably start again come WWDC next year. Marcus Ransom built this slide as part of our Jamf Nation live series in Australia to look at the Ventura cycle. So, just like the Earth moves around the Sun, we move around our OS cycle like a wheel, rather than a straight line. We start with the release, and this gives you a chance to do your first round of testing. It is at this point where you'd want to be providing the first round of feedback within your team and to your vendors. We then have a further period of testing, which can be described as monitoring and check to see what has been resolved. As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, you may not need to be doing all the testing, but be aware of what is happening. Also, it is this time where you want to be preparing communications to staff, building test plans, and getting users to test software. 
As Mac admins, we can ensure software gets deployed and configured correctly. However, I doubt you're a master user of every bit of software you deploy, so having staff complete testing as well is critical. For Sonoma, as the release date is almost a month earlier than Ventura was, these testing times have been greatly reduced to only eight weeks, which means we will be moving into the next stage sooner than previous years. We then have a maximum of 90 days to ensure that your adoption process is ready. This is due to the hard limits which Apple put in place on delaying updates. This isn't to say you have to wait the whole 90 days. If you're ready on day one, that's great. It's also at this point where you can leverage some of the items we discussed on preparing your environment. We then have between 32 and 19 weeks to provide minor updates. This can bring bug fixes, future improvements which didn't make it into release date and security fixes. This cycle can also be classified into three stages, test, adopt, exploit. So just like our OS lifecycle, we want to take that same approach to each stage of the testing and adopting stage, where it's a cycle rather than a linear process. We start with our initial testing as the new beta release becomes available. We can then start collaborating and sharing what has been found and also what others have found. You'll also want to work with your test environments to ensure they work as expected or any other new features are available to support your new OS. Depending on the size of your org, you'll also want to gain feedback. As previously mentioned, you would be hard pushed to be an advanced user in every application you deploy. So you need to rely on your users for their feedback. Finally, we want to be preparing communications to your users. While you'll have some users which will be updating on day one, you will have other users who may be reluctant or just don't see the importance. Using these communications and other strategies like gamification can help your adoption. As we are now in the final stages of the Sonoma beta cycle, it is critical to start preparing communications to users or understanding your adoption strategy. Then we have to be ready for last minute changes. These can and have happened in the past. Be prepared for last minute changes. As mentioned before in the presentation, to ensure things go smoothly is not necessarily doing all the testing, but being aware of what is happening. As an example from last year, I put together a timeline of events based on managed login items from Ventura. This is a story from Ventura's beta cycle, which highlights the feedback cycle and what happened. Much of this was pulled from the Mac admin Slack so I could put together a chain of events. On the 6th of June, Ventura Beta 1 was released. On the 7th of June, someone reported launch agent notifications and login item system preferences. This was a new behavior and change to how things running in the background or startup were now visible to users in system settings and as notifications, allowing them to disable potentially critical items on their device. As an example, they could choose to disable their endpoint protection if they chose to do so. Feedback was reported to allow for MDM support. Over the following days and weeks, countless people shared on Slack their feedback had been filed. On the 9th of August, Beta 5 was released with version 1 of a test plan for login and background item management. This allowed for the deployment of a config profile to enforce items and ensure users could not disable something that is needed or critical. On the 25th of August, Beta 6 resolved an issue where the login and background item management payload did not function with an updated version 1.1 of a test plan. On 7th of September, we released Jam Pro 10.41 with official Ventura compatibility around the same time as Ventura Beta 7. On the 9th of September, Beta 7 was released and login item notifications were suppressed if a login and background items payload was present. On the 20th of September, Beta 8 was released and login item notifications were no longer suppressed. On the 14th of October, we released Jam Pro 10.42 with official Ventura support. It also included two predefined configuration profiles containing managed login items payloads for the Jam binary. Also, support was added for uploading config profiles for managed login items. On the 24th of October, the first public release of Ventura 13.0 was shipped. So all this goes to show that early testing and reporting allowed for this functionality to be added and tested before the final release day and how things can change at the last minute.
This is just the start of a journey. This webinar is here to spark a thought process on how you prepare for the upcoming OS release now and going forward into the future. As mentioned earlier in this webinar, I've put together some additional links for videos and reading which go into greater detail on some of the tools I referenced. We then have our Jamf Nation community forum, which you can ask and get help from other community members and Jamf staff on a whole range of items. Remember, if you have a Jamf Cloud beta, you'll also have access to a special beta forum. If you haven't checked out the marketplace, I would highly recommend it. This is your store for integrations and additional tools which developers and vendors have shared to help extend your investment with other tools or platforms. If you've created a tool or a product and like to integrate with Jamf, the developer portal is your place to find support and resources. Thank you for joining us on this webinar.